The next morning, when Olaidu's parents returned home, they were surprised to find the door locked and no sign of their daughter. They asked their neighbors, but no one had any information about her whereabouts, and so they approached the three girls and inquired about Olaidu. The girls claimed they didn't know where Olaidu was. They lied that they had left her at the play and had returned to the village by themselves. They pretended to be concerned and suggested that maybe Olaido had run away with one of the young men from the town. Olaido's parents were shocked and heartbroken by this possibility. They wondered why their daughter would do such a thing and how they could find her. They decided to go to the town and look for her, hoping that she was still there. The three jealous girls, however, were not satisfied with their wickedness. They wanted to make sure that Olaido's parents would never see her again. They followed them secretly, hoping to stop them from finding the truth. They remembered that the bird was the only witness to what they had done, and they feared that it might tell Olaido's parents, and so they decided to kill the bird before it could speak. They reached the river and saw the bird sitting on the same tree, singing a sad song about Olaido. They picked up stones and threw them at the bed, trying to hit it, but the bed saw them and flew away, dodging their stones. The girls chased the bed, but it was too fast for them. They cursed and shouted at the bird, calling it names and threatening to pluck its feathers. But the bird ignored them and flew towards the town, where Olaido's parents were searching for their daughter. When the bird found Olaido's parents, it flew towards them and landed on Olaido's mother's shoulder. She was very surprised to see the bird, and she asked it if it knew where Olaido was. The bird nodded sadly and told her everything that had happened. How the girls had treated Olaido, how they refused to share their food, and how the mermaid had taken Olaido. It also told her that the girls were following them and that they had tried to kill it. Olaido's parents were shocked and angry by this revelation. They thanked the bird for its honesty and courage and asked it to show them the way to the mermaid's house. The bird agreed and flew ahead of them guiding them to the river. Meanwhile, the girls had lost sight of the bird and decided it had gone to the town. They feared that it had told Olaido's parents the truth and that they would be in trouble and so they decided to run away and hide, hoping that no one would find them. They ran into the forest, but since they didn't know where they were going, they soon got lost and started to blame each other for their misfortune. In a short while, they began to quarrel amongst themselves and a fight broke out. Soon enough, they were covered in scratches and bruises. They wished they had never met Olaido and had never done such a wicked thing to her. On reaching the river, Olaido's parents saw the mermaid sitting on a rock. They called out to her and begged her to return their daughter, but the mermaid looked at them and laughed wickedly. She told them that Olaido was now her slave and that she would never let her go. She said that Olaido had failed to make a proper offering and that she definitely had to pay the price. Now because Olaido was very beautiful, the mermaid enjoyed making her do all kinds of hard work to punish her. The mermaid showed Olaido's parents a picture of Olaido, looking very unhappy and miserable. And then she declared that Olaido was hers and that no one would ever take her away from her. Olaido's parents were very saddened by the mermaid's words. They pleaded with her to have mercy and spare their daughter. They told her that Olaido was innocent and that she didn't deserve such a fate. They also told her that Olaido was their only daughter and that they loved her more than anything and would do anything to get her back. They would even give their own lives for her. The mermaid was not moved by their words and tears though. Even though she knew that they were sincere and devoted, she decided that she wanted to punish them and make them her slaves as well. She decided that the best way to do this was to give them an impossible task. A task that she was sure they would fail. With an evil smile, she informed them that she would release all I do on one condition. And the condition was that they have to pass her test. When Olaido's parents inquired what the test was, she told them that the test was very simple, yet very difficult. All they had to do was to cross the river and reach the other side without using any bridge or boots. 
she died they could do that. She will not allow you to go. But if they failed, they will have to join all I do as her slaves. She informed them that they had only one hour to complete the test and that their time was starting now. All I do's parents were stunned and confused by the mermaid's test. How could they possibly cross the river without using any bridge or boot? They were obviously going to drown. They felt despair creeping in and they began to cry and pray fervently for a miracle. When they looked to the river bank, they saw a crowd of people there. The little bird had informed the villagers of their sad ordeal and the villagers had begun to troop there one by one to show their support. Led by the village high priest, they all prayed for a miracle and for help against the wicked mermaid who had tormented their village for so many years. When the one hour was almost up, Olaido's parents decided it was time to brave the water to sink their daughter. With tears in their eyes, they began walking towards the river. Holding each other's hands, they started singing a beautiful heartfelt song about their love for Olaido and a desperate plea for help. They didn't know how they would cross the river, but they had feet. They stepped into the water and they felt their feet get wet. They kept walking and they felt the water rise to their ankles. They were very afraid, but they knew in their heart that they would rather die than live without their daughter. The melody of the song All I Do's Parents sang was so sad and captivating that it caught the attention of the wind who blew through the area. The wind was moved by the song and decided that it was going to help them against the mermaid. It swirled around Olaido's parents, lifting them gently off the ground. With a powerful gust, the wind skillfully navigated through the river without disturbing it and gently set them on the other side. They had crossed the river. The villagers screamed in jubilation. Their prayers had been answered. They hugged each other and danced excitedly. With their feet on the other side of the river, all I those parents turned to the mermaid. They had passed her test against all odds. The mermaid was amazed and astonished by their feet. She saw that they had crossed the river without using any bridge or boots. They had crossed the river with love, sacrifice and courage. And they had passed the test and had earned their daughter back. She felt very ashamed and realized that she had been wrong. And so she decided to keep her promise to let Olaido go. She called out to Olaido, Olaido, your parents are here to pick you. Olaido, who was walking in her underwater home, came to the surface and she was very excited to see her parents. She couldn't believe that her parents had come to save her and that they had passed the mermaid's test. She was free. She hugged and kissed her parents and thanked them for their love and sacrifice and promised never to disobey them again. She also told the mermaid that she had forgiven her and that she hoped she would find peace and happiness. As the villagers celebrated Olaido's return, the village high priest, using his powers, located the three wicked girls in the forest. The king, upon hearing of their wickedness, was furious. He ordered his guards to bring them before him and the entire village. The girls were found trembling and covered in scratches and were brought back to the village. In front of the whole village, the high priest recounted their wicked deeds. The villagers gasped in shock and disgust. The king in his wisdom decided that such wickedness could not go unpunished. He declared that the girls were to be banished from the village forever. The villagers agreed with the king's decision and the girls were sent far away, never to return. Meanwhile, the mermaid, feeling remorse for her actions, revealed her sad story. She had once been a beautiful maiden who fell in love with a prince. However, a wicked witch, jealous of her beauty, turned her into a mermaid and banished her to live in the river. Over time, the mermaid became bitter and vengeful leaving her to torment the villagers. Now, having seen the power of love and sacrifice, she felt deep regrets for her actions. Back in the village, 
Olaido's beauty and kindness caught the eye of the prince who had come to celebrate her return. He fell deeply in love with her and asked her for her hand in marriage. Olaido, who had also fallen for the prince, happily agreed. The village was filled with joy and preparations for the royal wedding. And so, peace, happiness, and joy returned to the village. Olaido and the prince lived happily ever after, and the villagers no longer feared the river. The End Hi besties, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting stories. Thank you.